at this point in our lives, we have to be okay with making mistakes. A lot of people have taught us that being perfect is the best way to be and that is not true at all. Mistakes allows you to build resilience, it allows you to build more confidence in yourself, and it even allows you to have new perspectives on the things that you're doing. I used to always beat myself up about making mistakes, right? I always used to feel like, damn, I'm not good enough or maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But honestly, through the repetition of making mistakes, that's when you're able to recognize your greatness. And a lot of the big greats, whether if it's music artists, um, creatives, um, entrepreneurs, they made so much mistakes to the point where when they stepped into the big field and they stepped onto the big stage, they felt so comfortable and confident that they can deliver anything that they're trying to accomplish. I've been feeling so distant from you cause I just been so busy. What up y'all, welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time, I know it's been a minute. Um, winter time is the time where I usually just take a lot of time to myself and I just get low so I can reflect, so I can get more in tune with myself and my spirituality. And honestly, the, the winter blues in New York is not it at all, yo. Like, I, I hate it so bad. But I always talk about the concept of contrast with my friends. And having contrast is really good, right? So spring is here. The birds is chirping. The sun is staying out longer. I'm able to go outside without a big jacket. I feel, I feel nice. I'm not going to lie. But the moments to sit with yourself alone are very necessary, especially in the wintertime. And I'm glad that I was able to sit down and spend a lot of time to read. I've been reading a lot of new books. Um, I recently just read the book, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. It's a really good book. I've been reading The Pivot Year by Brianna Weiss. And right now I'm listening to The Compound Effect, which is really cool. And I wanted to share a concept from that. So basically The Compound Effect touches on the concept of little things that add up to big results over time. So let's say you go to the store every week and you buy ice cream, right? Let's say you spend $12 on a, on a carton of ice cream. Basically, if you do that every single week, you might not think it's a big deal, right? Because you're only spending $12. But if you multiply that by the amount of times that you do it every week for a whole year, it'll be a couple thousands of dollars. And if you do that for 20 years, it'll be like close to $20,000, let's say. And it's really important to track the small things that we do, especially when it comes to setting our goals. Because if we're trying to achieve saving money or we're trying to achieve, trying to lose weight, you might not think those calories from the ice cream is adding up, but it really is. So I've honestly been more mindful about the things that I'm spending my money on. And I'm, I've also been more mindful about the conversations I'm having with myself and other people as well too. I try not to speak negativity out into the world because our subconscious mind can't really de decipher whether if we're being truthful with ourselves or not. So if you say something negative like, I'm so dumb or I can't do this and this, and you're just joking around about it, you might think it's just a joke, but in the long run, when it comes down to you having to step up and do something great for yourself, you might hesitate. And we, we wonder where that comes from, but it's because we're not choosing the right combination of words to speak life into ourselves, into our minds, and even the people around us too. The past couple months has been really big for me because I've been reflecting on my journey and my path a lot. And I've been stepping into my purpose more. For those of y'all who don't know, I recently just did my first ever sewing DIY sustainability workshop and it was honestly the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in fashion. Um, I did it for grades four through six for children and it was about 20 to like 24, 25 students in Queens, New York. And I really feel so fulfilled because a lot of the kids don't have guidance, especially within the creative field. And when I was younger, I didn't really have anybody to teach me that stepping into fashion was something that I could do for my career, or let alone just being able to have a creative outlet where I can express myself and just, you know, pour my emotions into. <laughs> It doesn't really work well, probably wouldn't ever, but at least it does something to protect you from the pin. 
And it's a full circle moment, right? Because I was touching on the compound effect before. And ironically, I never took any sewing classes on how to develop my skills. I went to FRT to study production management. I got my bachelor's degree. But I spent so many years since about like 2017, 2018, refining my craft of sewing. And I was asking a lot of my peers and my some of the professors in the school how to learn how to develop my skill and I kept making a lot of mistakes I kept messing up I didn't really have the knowledge about it but um, I had a lot of people around me who were willing to show me and I honestly would just go to the thrift store take old garments apart like denim jeans and slacks or whatever vests and I'll take them apart sew them back together just so I could get a better understanding of how garments were constructed and then I started transitioning into developing garments by getting patterns from Etsy or I was going to get patterns from Joann's or the garment district pre-made patterns and then I would just sew the clothes and that's what allowed me to keep doing it and the repetition of that you know every single day just sewing a side seam or sewing a belt loop or sewing a hem it might not seem like nothing when you're trying to start out on your creative journey as a designer but those things add up in the long run and it got to the point where now I'm able to pass my knowledge on to these children and I never even got a class on how to sew garments and everything. So it was really fulfilling. So the workshop was exciting, right? Because I taught them how to hand sew and upcycle denim. So there was a whole bunch of denim jeans that was provided. And basically I was just teaching them that this is not just about being perfect. This is not about just trying to be you know, in competition with each other, right? It's literally about having fun, utilizing this as a creative outlet to express yourself. Let's say you had a bad day at school and you don't have anybody to talk to and you're home by yourself or, you know, you're around people who you can't really express yourself to. Maybe this is the outlet where you can start being able to express yourself and find new things out about yourself. And I'm not gonna lie, this generation of kids is different. You feel me? Like some of them that I was talking to, they didn't really have as much confidence in themselves. And a lot of it has to do with being on social media and comparing ourselves to other people, which is why it's really important to teach the kids that we don't have to spend so much time on the phone. Here are some other outlets or different things that, you know, different alternatives. And a lot of times adults tell kids, stop being on your phone all day, but we have to show them other alternatives to what they can do with their free time. One of the kids was so, he was so cool, yo, but he, he was so hesitant to start when he was like trying to cut out the denim and I was teaching him how to distress denim and everything. And he was hesitant because he was like, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to mess up. And I don't want, you know, I'm like, yo, bro, it's cool. Like, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. Literally, I took, you know, I took the scissors for him and I just showed him like, here, this is how you cut these, uh, cut the knee. I asked him, do you like small holes in your jeans or big holes? He said he liked small ones. So I started cutting small holes for him to show him like, yo, this is how you do it. Then I took the seam ripper. I explained what the seam ripper was. I started, you know, opening it up with the seam ripper. And then he started kind of getting more into it just because he saw me showing that to him. And that's what we have to start doing. We have to be able to show these kids that this is how you do it as opposed to just verbally explaining it to them. And I told him that there's no wrong answer to this. It's however you want to do it and whatever way it comes out, it's just about you having fun and trying something new. By the end of the class, he was more confident. He started getting in the zone of it more. So I was really happy about that. And all of the other kids had amazing ideas. Like somebody, a couple of girls were saying that they wanted to take their denim jeans and turn it into a tote bag. Some of them were saying that she wanted to have the silhouette from her Telfar bag. So she's going to turn it into that. Some of the, some, one girl had like these hearts that she cut out and then she pinned them to the jeans and she was gonna hand sew them when she got home. So I was excited. I didn't really have to show them so many different alternatives of what you can turn jeans into, but they already were using their imagination and they just had to be in a safe place to be able to feel that. So I'm excited about that. I personally think it would be so cool if the education system, especially in New York to start off, cause that's where I'm from. Um, if we're able to implement these type of sewing classes in the curriculum, because when I was younger, we didn't really have that. And then when I went to high school in Long Island, my, my teacher, Mrs. Murphy, thank, thank, I'm so thankful for her. She had a fashion design program for years in our high school, and I didn't really know about it until I was in like 11th grade. And I took her fashion design drawing course, and that's what really got me inspired to go to FRT. And she spoke life into me, and then I gave up my basketball dreams to go to FRT because she made me realize my potential. And if I didn't have her, you know, pushing me and being on top of me every day and recognizing my power within myself, I wouldn't have done that. And then I wouldn't have been able to share this experience with the kids. But I say all that to say it's so important to be able to have a curriculum where kids can feel confident in themselves, to express themselves. And 
listen, math is really good. English, social studies, science, I'm all for it. But there's a part of our brains where we have to feed our creativity because it allows us to attack things from different perspectives. And creativity is within any system, whether if it's the health field, law, whether if it's communications, graphic design, whatever. We all have creativity, even the creativity of being able to connect with somebody, even the creativity to be able to deliver a message to somebody a certain way, or even a lawyer talking to a judge and allowing them to see their perspective on a case that they're working on, you feel me? So that's why I believe that it's important to do so. And if they want to see kids start thriving in science, social studies, math, English, reading, whatever it is, I think it's important that they have another alternative of what it means to express themselves. I wanted to take the time out to say thank you to Asha and Shay. So basically, um, it's a funny story because Asha and I have mutuals. She went to my friend's college, so it all worked out. But Asha gave me the opportunity to come to the, you know, to come to Queens and do the workshop for the kids. And I wanna say this right. So this workshop was on behalf of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated at Epsilon Pi Omega Chapter. So I just wanna give a big shout out to all y'all who made this happen, who was contributing factors to making this possible for the kids. And honestly, I wanna keep expanding, right? Like I'm finally finding my purpose and fashion is cool. I love selling clothes. I love having my own brand and I'm gonna continue to keep doing that. But I really, we're at a time now where it's so important to give back, especially to the children. There's a lot of things and a lot of um, determining factors on social media that are distracting these kids that are making them feel like they shouldn't even invest in themselves anymore. And I wanna be able to have a big impact on that. So whoever is all for that with me, I'd love to bring you on the journey as well. And let's really change these kids' lives, yo, because a lot of them don't really have guidance, especially within my community as well. I'm not gonna lie, I tend to be hard on myself, but Starting out the new year, I was reflecting and I just was not happy with the output that I was doing in my life. And I wasn't really happy with um, the things that I've been doing on a day to day. So I started shifting things around and I started writing in my journal. And instead of having like a yearly goal thing, you know, where everybody has their new year resolutions for the whole year, I started focusing on 90 day goals just so I can be able to track them more so I don't have to put so much pressure on myself and I'd be able to be more intentional about the decisions I make on a day to day. So I've been really focusing on literature a lot. For those of y'all who don't know, I've also started a podcast called The Gray Domain Podcast. And basically it's having deep conversations about the gray areas on our creative journey. And the main focus is to highlight um, the emotions and the obstacles we tend to overlook on our quest to freedom. And I, I'm honestly gonna be interviewing some cool people. I don't even wanna call it an interview. It's gonna be like deep conversations, you know, cool conversations with my friends and people that I respect and being able to just tackle different things so that the audience can be able to have new perspectives, especially as a designer. A lot of fashion designers don't really talk about certain things on camera and I wanna be able to provide different insights for y'all as well too. So I'm really excited about that. It's Gray Domain Podcast on YouTube. And the episode that I'm about to drop, I hope y'all subscribe to it because it's gonna be a groundbreaking episode with one of my closest friends who made a big impact on me in fashion. So I'm excited about that as well too. But I'm happy I'm starting to figure out what I wanna do on a day to day. And I love being able to express myself. I love having conversations with people, connecting with y'all. So the podcast is definitely something that I'm going to expand as well. And as I said before, I'm really big on just being more intentional about everything. So, I, like I said, I've been touching on literature. I've been reading a lot. I've been actually getting into poetry to express myself more. Um, I've been reading different books that is out of my comfort zone, um, different genres of books. I've been watching more shows. Like I'm watching different shows on Netflix right now, but not just for entertainment. I've been watching how they do certain camera angles and I've been watching how they do certain transition. I've been watching like the different emotions that characters have and the plot twists that they have and implementing that into like different creative writing activities that I do for myself. But at this point in our lives though, we should really do things that challenge ourselves every day. Because if we're doing the same things all the time, how do we really expect ourselves to grow? So I always envision myself as the best version of myself in the future, right? And I start writing down who is Justin? What is he What is he dressed like? What is he doing his day to day? Who are the people that is in his life? Um, what is the type of food that he eats? What does he travel? What is he reading? And I started just writing these things down and I started stepping into that more. 
and people on the outside may see you like, yo, you're, you're going through these changes. I'm noticing that you're doing well on social media. It's all good that things is going well on social media, but a lot of times it's internally. And I want y'all to recognize that y'all have so much power within you and you don't have to get validation from people around you to step into what you wanna do. Don't be afraid, like I said before, but be willing to enjoy the process to learn new things about yourself, to share experiences with people that you love, and to get out your comfort zone, because that's what life is about. February seemed to be a really weird month for a lot of people. There was a lot of fluctuating emotions. A lot of my friends and a lot of people around me that I've been speaking to were telling me that they were going, they were going through it financially or they had like some obstacles, they were feeling kind of down. There's a lot of chaos going on in the world as well too, as y'all know, a lot of systems are being changed, but this is a big pivotal moment in history right now. And it's good to feel down or feel sad. Like I think people associate the emotions of being sad or angry or down with being negative and it's not negative, right? It's about contrast. So we can't be happy all the time. And a lot of times the moments where I feel sad or I feel down, I try not to run away from it. I'll sit down on the couch and watch a Netflix show. I'll write in my journal, listen to some sad music, whatever, just so I could connect with the feeling and not really judge it. It's so easy to, uh, to try to observe and analyze logically about what we're feeling. And sometimes you don't have to logically try to, you know, dissect what's wrong with you. You can just feel it and that's okay. Ask yourself this question for real. When was the last time you did something for yourself that brought you so much happiness and joy without other people seeing it? Maybe you need to go for a walk in the park. Maybe you need to travel upstate and go see a view at the top of a mountain. Maybe you need to go to the zoo. If you like animals, maybe we could go to an animal shelter and pet some animals. Like if you want to treat yourself to a dinner, then treat yourself to that dinner. But don't hold out on doing things for yourself because you feel like you don't deserve it. You don't have to punish yourself for the mistakes that you've been making, for real, like it's cool. And you don't have to always feel like you need to, you know, present yourself as having it all together. We all trying to figure it out. I know people who are millionaires who are still trying to figure it out and they be feeling down, they're feeling sad, they're trying to figure out how they can expand or they're trying to make a pivotal change in their life. At this point in our lives, we have to be okay with making mistakes. A lot of people have taught us that being perfect is the best way to be and that is not true at all. Mistakes allows you to build resilience, it allows you to build more confidence in yourself, and it even allows you to have new perspectives on the things that you're doing. I used to always beat myself up about making mistakes, right? I always used to feel like, damn, I'm not good enough or maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But honestly, through the repetition of making mistakes, that's when you're able to recognize your greatness. And a lot of the big greats, whether if it's music artists, um, creatives, um, entrepreneurs, they made so much mistakes to the point where when they stepped into the big field and they stepped onto the big stage, they felt so comfortable and confident that they can deliver anything that they're trying to accomplish. But I always tell y'all as adults especially, it's never too late to make a shift in your life. Like I said, it is never too late to make a shift in your life, no matter how old you are. If you're in law, if you're in the medical field, if you're in literature, if you're a teacher, if you're a designer, business person, whatever, you can change and go to a different career path. And it's so easy for adults to, you know, instill into these kids that you need to know exactly what you need to do by the age of 15, 16, so you can go into this career path and then kids go to college feeling lost because they're like, yo, I don't know what I want to do. I'm all for education, right? But oftentimes, I know people personally who gave up on their dreams at like 21, 22 because they were like, yo, it's too late. How is it too late? You've only been on the earth for 20 years. The earth is billions of years old. You feel me? Like there's so much that could change in six months. So if you wanna make that change, if you wanna step into something, and you don't have to do things to go into a career, right? You can literally just do something to explore. We're allowed to explore. We have the freedom to explore, so we need to do that. And it's okay to go through like five, 10 different things because then you realize that, hey, maybe those things aren't for me, but I know what's for me now. I'm gonna read y'all my background on my phone real quick because this ties into it. I had to save it as my screen saver. But it says, don't be afraid to change everything overnight. Book a flight, cut your hair, change your name, wander through a city with no phone and no plan. Eat a five-star meal alone, ask strangers how they really are, follow a black cat down a dark alley. I don't know about all that, I'm, 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 I'm not with that. Dress how you've never dressed. Act how you've never acted. Remove the gap between the idea and execution. Your story gets better when you realize, sorry, my phone locked. The script, the script you're living is made up. The faster you change, the faster life changes. Yo, I had to set that as my background because it's so easy to just get comfortable in the normal routine. 
So I'm like, yo, I'm about to switch it up. I'm not saying I'm about to cut my hair. You feel me? I'm not, I'm not going to do a lot. But I just want to be able to try new things and explore different avenues without having any repercussions. And you don't always have to feel like you got to present it to the world and show it on social media. Like, just do it for you. One big transition right now for me is like a lot of my friends are stepping into marriage and having children and honestly shout out to my bro rico for having his firstborn child that's my brother yo and shout out to my brother eddie for having his second child or he's about to have a second child on the way and honestly it's so important to have friends around you who want you to do well in life and who wish you the best and Honestly, I went to my bro Eddie's baby shower the other day and just being around my bros from high school is so important to me because I haven't been around them as a group in a really long time. And it, it honestly made me emotional because I'm like, yo, all of us is getting older. I've been around my bros since we was like 12 years old, like 11, 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? And now my bros are starting families and stuff. But my friends, a lot of them, you know, they push me to achieve this excellence in my life. And although, you know, they're at a point where they're having children and they have more responsibilities, me just seeing them staying on top of their A game and providing for their family, not making excuses, going out and getting that bag to provide, to be a provider, it's honestly inspiring, yo. And I want to be able to achieve that excellence in every area of my life. When it's my turn to have a family in the future or when it comes to my career, when it comes to my craft, uh, I just want to be able to achieve that excellence and I'm so thankful for the people around me who inspire me, who uplift me and I want to say thank you to all the people who've been speaking life into me along the journey because it has not been easy at all. And a lot of times on social media, you know, I'm posting my accomplishments but there's so many obstacles and so many downfalls that I've had where I had to learn about myself, I had to get into my emotions and I've been able to turn those things into positive things. So always remember that you could take your challenges and your obstacles and turn them into beauty. You can make them you can make that beautiful story happen from a dark day. With all that being said, I'm about to lock in with the YouTube channel more now. I've just been trying to get different areas of my life in order. But I have a amazing music project coming out and I'm really on my storytelling stuff. So I'm excited to show that to y'all as well. But if y'all haven't subscribed already, subscribe below. And make sure you get a lot of sunlight because it's about to get active this summer and we're going crazy. Keep on following your dreams. Keep believing in yourself and spend time with people who uplift you only, yo. I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. And thank you for the 1,000 subscribers. I didn't get a chance to say thank you, but I'm so thankful for y'all. And we're going to keep expanding the journey.